G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to teach you beginners and advanced how to paint in acrylic. Got the size of the canvas there and also the colours I'm going to use in this tutorial going up the screen. Now I've got a bit of a layout here. I want to bring you over and show you just how to get that effect of the road going up and down. It's quite easy. Sometimes we might lay it out wrong and that's why we get a bit of a weird looking road. So get on over here and we'll get right into this. So I want to get the road coming up and over and way down in the distance just fading away into this sunset here. The best way to do it is you get, I've got this arch here. Now be careful not to keep coming down with it. Come down and then straight off. Come over and down then straight off. And then we'll have our little beat there. I'll show you as we we'll go through the painting but first I want to get this sky in. So down here I've got some soft white and that clear stuff, that's retarder. That's going to slow down the drying time of that acrylic paint because I only paint in acrylics and I'm going to use cerulean blue. I've got a bit of grey and some magenta for my sky. First I want to get this craft paint on my brush mixed with some retarder just so as I can blend beautiful sunset or a sunrise, whichever way you want to look at it. And I just want to get this crisscrossed into my canvas. I've got my lines there where I'm roughly going so I know where to go with that. That's just for me, but you can lay yours out the best way you want, what, the best way that suits you. So I'll get that a little bit beyond my treetop there. Now there's not much of a sky footprint there. I mean this is only a A4 size canvas. Now I just want to stroke that left and right. I need to get it nice and even so it's a thin even coat ready to put the sky colours on. If it's too thick and gluggy you'll have headaches. Now I've got my Indian yellow there. This has got no retarder in it, these colours. Just that one there, the base colour did okay. And I want to get my sunset colour in the bottom of the sky horizon. And I'll probably have over here a bit of blue. So I want to just get this now mapped in. Just get it on there. Nice and bright. Pull it across that white. There we go. Now I'm going to just wipe this brush and pick up some yellow ochre or yellow oxide, whichever it's labelled as, this one here. I want to get this right there, right over here, right to that yellow, because where I have the blue, I want it to hit this oxide, not the Indian yellow, because it'll help prevent it going green. I'm just slicing that into there, slicing the two colours together, getting a reasonable colour of them going. Now I'm getting a little bit of, I'll grab some grey over here because I just want some of this here and I want a little bit of magenta in that just so as it's lighting it up with some warmth, not too much though. Just along here where the blue's going to hit, I want to get some of this warmth down there, pull it through the sky because it's kind of an afternoon sunset I suppose, yeah it is, well I've, sunset is the afternoon isn't it? Now I've just washed that brush picking up some of the cerulean blue and we'll quickly get this into the corner. Right over here, now it's up to you how big you make your blue corner, mine ended up being that big so that's how big it's going to be. I want to wipe it off the brush, I don't want too much on the brush. And then I want to slice it into the sky colours there as well, pulling it. maybe just whispering it down, pointing it down into the horizon where the sun glare will be, just like that. Now the paint brush is full of paint, so I'm going to grab my kitchen cloth and wipe the buggery out of it, just so as it's very dry, not loaded, so it's unloaded. And I want to see if I can just scrumble those colours together like so. That's working okay. Back to the blue there, there we go. See what happens. Now that looks a bit mumble jumble for a sky, which you'll be forgiven to think like that. We're going to add the white now. Now I've got myself a fan brush and using the titanium white out of the tube, I want to chisel up both sides and first get my bottom glare going where the main intense sunset is going to be which is right here. So what I want to do is just push it on, get all this glare and spider it out. It's going to get dirty, which is fine. Stop. Throw that brush into your water container and grabbing a blending brush and a 
something to wipe your blending. You want to start pushing this just I'm dabbing it see I'm getting a nice stamp there now quickly what look at the build up on there I'll wipe that off because I don't want to go putting it everywhere and I want to tease this out into my sky here some kind of fashion but I might turn left I can hear those planes Ian they're always happening mate okay now we need to add more white because that's sunken into those colors so before I finish this off, I want to get these kind of clouds where I want here. So I'm going to create their formation. There's some on that side. And I'll get something going from the blue down as well. That'll do. Sit these into the sky in a beautiful, pleasing to the eye look. Drag it. Now this is acrylic, it's not oil. A lot of people ask me in the comments, is that acrylic or oil? So forgive me if I'm telling you what it is because not everybody has watched my videos and I can't be too complacent assuming that everybody's seen them and know that I paint in acrylic. I'm just blending and then having a look into my monitor, seeing how it looks. Not too bad, that's a bit hard there I'm gonna destroy that a bit a bit of wind hitting that and this here now I've washed my fan brush and reloaded it because I need more white here I want to really emphasize the glare here so I'm getting it on and get some other traces scooting through the sky like so but I want to keep that intensity there I might have to give it another load after this blend. Let's see how we go. So I'm grabbing my blending brush again and slowly stamping that intensity. Don't stamp it down too much where you lose it. And I want to get these bits whispering away. There we go, joining up to there. Get this a bit teased out there. I need to look in my monitor just to see if I'm getting the effect that I'm after. Now back to this brush, I think I've cleaned it. Yeah, I have. I want to grab that color here we mixed up, the gray, with some of the magenta there. I just want a slight hint of that down on the horizon where the road's going to meet the sky. So which is all along here. Now I've got to look at this and just see. Okay, what I might have to do is dry the sky a bit. Now I've given that a dry, I've added a, I've got that colour and I've added a little bit of white to it just because I want to get this kind of magenta vibe, the warmth soaking up there as well, just like that. A lot of this is going to be covered, only a little bit of this is going to be seen, but I need it. Just f see the sky area, I want to get the corner of this brush now and just gently fade it up into that bit of the white sun there because we're going to re- do the sun to finish that off on the top of this, but I just want some of this there so we've got that warmth down the middle of the highway where it's joining the sky. I'm just gonna grab a brush I can control some of this white. I've just got a little cat tongue filbert brush. And in here now, I wanna build up the glare of my sun, just building it up, go over that a bit, but don't make it a perfect circle. And then with this, I wanna get some of this just radiating up into the clouds as well where it's being hit like so load your brush up some more if you feel too much of it's running out and it's just glancing across the sky so to speak like that we need a bit more here and once you know these fundamentals you'll just have so much fun doing your skies You'll be doing them until the cows come home. Before you know it, you'll have an art gallery full of skies and a backyard full of cows. And you know what we can do? See how that's working? Grab yourself a little detail brush, a little pointy thing. I want to grab some of the white. Still a little bit wet there, just a star right up in the sky there. I want to get a bit of this white just between that and the sun there we go because i want a bit of glare at the top of my road so this will be sunken back when i put that 
little detailed part of the road out there, okay? I want to bring this in just like so. I've just got in some white on there. I did it off camera, but I better do it on here. See the top that was there? I've just got very little on there, and I'm scrumbling it into that sky. Being careful not to bring this tainted magenta white colour too far up there. I just I just thought it was meeting the sky too harsh. And now I'll just pick up some of the pure white on the other side of that brush. And if I feel I've lost some of this white, I can just tinsel it back down there like that. And that's it. Okay, I've got some grey here. I'm going to bring some over here. And I just want the road at the very top done first. So I'm going to get a little bit of black and just taint that grey to the value I want. We're just going to do the little bit out here and then we're going to block the rest in around it, okay? So our road that came across here, I can just reference that line back for now, but it'll get covered up. This road is going to be there. Where's our, there it is there. So just like that. Because believe it or not, that little bit is going to be the end of the road that you see going up. Now what I want to do is block in the side of the road, which is the dirt, ground, sand, the rocks, trees and shrubs and grass. All the different browns. Got a bit of black there as well. Just so as I can get a vibe going that I feel would look quite good. Now I just want me dark block in colour. So I'm going to grab the burn umber, which is here, and the burnt sienna. Mix that up. And I'll add over here, I've got some black, a bit of black to it as well. There we go. You can even put some of that magenta if, if you want, just to add some earthly warm tones to it. And I want to use this to map in the blocking in under colour for the side of the road and the hills and the grass. I'll build it off my brush. That's not a bad colour, I'm happy with that. So I will grab a flat brush as well, just so I can control near the side of the road there. And I want to start, there's me road, see there, that we put in. And we want to come from about here with this stuff and then start building up like that over there. And the same on the other side, come from the road. Let's see about there and we're building up come down a little bit if you want but then it's all of a sudden going to come right up there now we can block this in to there to our road and i can use this bigger one now and i want to just block in now this is going to be straight but on a slight angle going up okay so i want to get this kind of going upwards like that and then I'll detail the silhouette of that for my land. So I'll bring that all the way to roughly where the road's going to be. And I'll do the same on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll just get the top in the way I feel I want it. Okay. Load the brush up and block it into the road as well. Now, if you like what you see so far, give me the thumbs up, share, like, and subscribe, and tell me who you are and where you're from, and I'll say hello back to you. Now, I've just got my little cat tongue filbert again, and now what I'm doing, I'm just detailing the top silhouette here to a fashion I'm happy with, so it'll look quite earthly, nature, tree type sort of stuff. All different types. Some kind of long stuff out here. Just breaking it up a bit, trying to make it look earthly and, I don't know. And now I'll use another brush to try and get some tree top silhouettes in there as well. I've got my small deer foot. I find that makes nice dotty um, stamp patterns. So, like I'll explain to you here, I want some, this side can be silhouette let's do some trees here so just something like that turn your brush if you're getting 
too many even patterns. It's a trees lower down there and higher up here coming out of the um, foliage there. Fill in the edge. Tree stuff there, there we go, different stuff. I don't want it all uniform coming up like a pattern. I'm trying to break that vibe from it to get a more natural vibe. And I want to get something here. This one here I might hit with some extra light. So I'll add some of that raw sienna to this. Under there. I've given that a dry. And using that brush, I'm going to pick up some of the raw sienna. But let's say here, let's get this burnt. So we'll just get some kind of trunk there. Try and keep them thin if you can. Connect it, connect it. What I'm doing, I'm just grabbing a small detail brush. You can see what I've done here. I'm just adding little fine gestures of tree definition with the smaller brush, just to get rid of all that earlier stamp on that I've done. I'm just trying to create different details just by adding this in like here. Now that's okay, give it a dry. I wanna try and just put in some rock dirt structure in here before I lace the grass and the softer ground coverings over it. So I'm looking for maybe some of this and some of this raw umber and burnt sienna, just to get some rocks. I want darkness first, so I'll grab the darkness of it. And like on this side, I just wanna, what I'll do is I'll get a lot of this off my brush. So it's not thick, I can scratch it in. And I want to start from here and I want to kind of come small like so, like this. And I want to come quite big as I come to the right hand side. So I'm just going to scratch it in first, just left and right. Now I'm going to pick up some more because I feel it's ran out, there we go. And I want to get this the right value so I can just highlight it enough so when I sink all my grass on it's going to look good to the eye, pleasing to the eye. It can come right up here a bit more. And we're going to do the same on the other side. About here I want to point it in there somewhere. It's all bits of dirt and rock. Coming along there. some more. This part's quite close so I can have it more sharper. There we go. I need to look in my monitor. Not too bad. I need to just get the brush stroke so it looks more earthly. So I want to kind of come down like Zs, but real lazy Zs like usual. Try and get it down there. Now look at it. Stop and look at it. Analyze it. Where do you need more darks? So what I'll do is I'll grab some of this over here and I'll just put some of that dark with it. I don't want the pure dark because that's what's already on there. So dry your work as well. I want to come from the top, scratch it down where the grass is going to be. Come, have some bands coming all the way down because it's going to be all grass up there. Darker bits. So just grabbing the first colour with a little bit of black. Here and there now, I want to get some black bits in there. Coming from there. Just like so there's... And then over this we can finalise it with the pure, not pure, but with some highlighted dirt colour. Scooting up. Just playing with it with brush strokes. Some of this can be a bit darker. It's not dark enough, scooting down. By so grabbing the raw sienna, and I want to put a little bit of magenta in it. 
There we go, a little bit more. And some white. Now that magenta, that little bit of magenta I put in there has just added some warmth to it. Now try not to go too crazy with this. We just want to get, I'll get a lot of that off. We just want to get some gingerly highlights coming down this. Not too much, just enough to stand out. If you go too much, it starts looking like a massive pattern and it's very hard to stop yourself dragging lights and darks backwards and forwards from each other. I want a lot of this being refracted with the light refracting off there. There, leaving lots of dark bits, but the odd little light bit there. And this is where you stop, have a cup of tea, look at it, analyze it, take an hour if you have to, and go back with the lights and darks until you're happy with the marriage of the two. Now I've got some Viridian Green and Green Oxide. I wanna get the Viridian Green and let's say some Yellow Ochre, just to get that dead green twig color. I like to put into my, some of my trees and foliage just to give them that realistic vibe because I want to get a lot of grass, just, or, you know, greenery, tapering down, leaving the darks under it, coming along here. I'm just trying to get this colour sitting on the dark, floating down that bankment there. Do the same on the other side. Just lots of green tracing from these shrubs down under that darkness. So I'm just coming here, sitting those trees back, bringing this down. There we go. And now pick up the green oxide. Give that a dry. Grabbing the green oxide and starting to just very fine brush strokes. Get some of this just hitting the tops of all that viridian now. Very lightly, look how light I'm touching it. I'm being sure to leave dark underneath. You'll notice for those beginners, I'm bowing everything into the middle of the painting. I'm not doing these strokes that way. I'm bringing them into the center. Just looks more pleasing to the eye. Now I'm grabbing some of the Indian yellow over here and pulling the green oxide into the Indian yellow. Now that's too much green, I need more yellow into it. I'm just looking for that highlighted colour to chuck on some of that, just to give it that minimal, simplest bullshit effect. I've done a little bit there, and I just want little bits of this filtering through, like so. This bit here, I'm going to scratch it in just to get the vibe of that colour there. And then from about here, I'll start stamping it with sharper focused detail. I'm starting to use the green oxide and the viridian more in my paintings just to try and get a different vibe of green. But if you don't have it, use what greens you've got and yellows and highlighted colours. Now I'm just going to grab me pure black with a flat brush so I can get the edges to nice and sharp. So there's that bit there. If it's too tiny to get in, stay away and use a smaller brush to get into it because I want to start bringing this road now 
around and straight, like I said. I'm going to come around. And straight, like I said. Now all that can be blocked in and then we'll fix up the edge there once I've blocked it in. Once this is blocked in, you can dry it as well. And doing this arch is a better way to get a road going up and over a hill. It just looks more pleasing and natural to the eye once the painting's finished. Now I'm just using a small brush to get this up where it belongs, right up here. Okay, I'm grabbing my grey colour and I want this to be a bit darker than what it is. So I'm just going to grab the black. I'm just going to put the black into it and get it the value that I want. Now I want to brush this in the direction that the road, so the road's going that way. That's the way I want to kind of brush it all the way up to the horizon there. And we'll build these brush strokes up, so to speak. There we go. Is that too dark, too bright? Not too bad. Now it looks a bit iffy affity, but we're going to slowly de iffy affy it, if you know what I mean. I don't know where these words come from, but I, s I think I swallowed a silly dictionary. Okay. And having those darks here and there as well is good. Now I'm coming to the side of the brush and I'm getting less brush stroke widths so as I can control it this way, going up the road, get it right off the painting there, come right off the painting. See what happens when you come right off the painting, you get a better edge. So I'm starting this side now, right off the painting, picking up some more, getting it right up there. Because we need a glary bit on this road as well to make it look a bit more believable. Get all this up there. I'm just going to stamp that there like so and restroke it. Now one of my friends tried to ring me the other day but um, her ringing wasn't working and it's not a good thing when your ring doesn't work so if you sorted your ring out let me know. You know who you are. I'm just trying to neaten a lot of this now before I finish the brush strokes and give it its final glaring. I just want to try and make it look more road than not road, if you know what I mean. Now if it's your first time here, check the links below. Go to my videos tab. I have over 500 tutorials on my channel here and there's all different varieties to choose from. Have a look at the thumbnail and that's what the actual painting is. Now I've done that as much as I need. I want to get the glare on the hill and then darken the foreground of this road. Just by grabbing the grey, I've wiped that brush. I haven't washed it, I've just wiped it. Now I haven't dried the painting either, so we'll see how we go here. I want to get this up on the mound there. Now I'm going to stamp it because I want, let's say I'll get it there first so you can see just what's going on in my mind, even though I'm not in Carolina. I've said that a few times, haven't I, little buddy? You sure have, and a few people have cottoned on to what you're actually doing there. Okay, now I'm going to slowly just have a bit of a glare here. So I'm stamping it on and letting it radiate from the sides and down the middle. Because I've got a rubber glove on, I'm going to just dingle dangle it into that other colour so it's scrambled in. I'll look in my monitor there and just have a look. And you can see what it's doing. I want some bands of it as well, mainly, you know how the road gets the bands of it in there. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking all right. I want, let's say, a band of it here. Turn the brush over if we can. Now, I didn't dry my painting because I wanted, if anything, if I'm going to do this, I want some of the rubbery so I can scratch it like this. I've put some more black into this main colour we used to block in the whole road. 
let's get a little bit darker because the very bottom here, I'll come off the painting, I want it a bit darker, so I want to stamp it up and just kind of let it scrumble in. Now my painting's still wet and rubbery, look how it's not working, so I'm going to turn the camera off and dry it. And now we should be getting a bit more of a transferring sitting where it should be. So I just want it kind of dark around here. Radiating up from about here, not too much, just about there. I'm just using the brush to see how it's sticking now because I've dried it. Scratch it in. Yeah, look at that, beautiful, nice and scratchy and just getting that corner nice and dark. Probably get a vibe of it scooting up a little bit. Sometimes roads do that. There we go. Fun doing roads. Nothing to it, it's just going loose with it all. Now I want to get my toothbrush and flick in some gravel. Now I'm just using my toothbrush and from about here I want to flick some of the dark tar spots, careful. And then we'll highlight some of them as well. But dry it first so as you don't get, get them turning all muddy with each other. Now I'll dry that. I've washed my toothbrush, picking up some grey. Make sure this is inky enough to flick. Try not to overdo it. Just keep it where you put the black ones so they're all freckled together. And this is just adding foreground detail to oh that's too much foreground detail to your painting. If you've done too much, just simply go back over it with a darker colour. But there we go. I want to look in my camera and see if it's picking this up. I just feel you got more control with a toothbrush to get the actual dots on there. You can flick it with a fan brush if you want, but sometimes you get spaghetti string lines everywhere. Now I've dried everything, getting the pure grey and some white. I want it to be white, but I want it tainted with grey, so I don't want it pure bright white. It's mostly white, so probably 75% white, 25% of the grey mixed in my volume there. That rain's coming down. Yeah, it's all right. And I want to go from about here, okay, and probably bring it all the way to maybe there. So what I'm going to do is just gradually keep them the same width. Just let it fade into nothing over there. And now I'll try and join them up. I'll get it on there and then I'll neaten it up off camera so as I'm not boring the living buggery out of you. Okay. Getting this one on there, so from about here maybe. And just finishing maybe there somewhere. I'm just gonna join the dots. I'm coming in the middle of every gap to get a reasonable join of them all. Now you can take this one up if you want. Let's tape this one up and see how we go. Okay, I've just stuck some low tack tape on there, masking tape, and don't put this on thick and heavy. Do it dry and scratchy first so it won't bleed. And we'll, hopefully we've got it the right thickness as the other side. And that way those people who have a iffity effity hand stroke they can take their time, mask it up, no rush. When you feel you've got to rush things, that's when you can't be bothered doing things. And we'll just do that. I'm going to watch you pull that tape off here. Don't pull it off off camera. No, we'll pull it off so everyone can see, okay? Let's have a go. Pull this side off. And this side. And you can see the difference. Okay, we'll do the double yellow line in the middle of the road. So I'm going to just um, 
go on each side. So we want about the center of the road, which is there, and just coming out here. Tack that on there. And the center, which is there. And tack that on. Where's the center of that road, which is right there. Okay, now I've got to try and keep a gap in the middle. Over here, I've mixed up some yellow oxide and Indian yellow just to get some kind of orangey road line color there. Now, because these are on an angle, I'm going to do one side at a time. So we'll get right there, and that's the thickness I want my line. Yeah, about there. Now, what we've got to do, we've got to prime this in white first so it will stick, and then we can paint it in the yellow color. So get that pushed on and then prime it up. Don't have this too wet, otherwise you'll get a white ridge under the edge of it. Now give that a dry. Okay, now picking up the yellow ochre, Indian yellow mix you mixed and gingerly go over that. Try not to rub too hard because depending how you dry it, you might pull the white back. Okay. Okay, let's pull that off so we can see what's happened. Oh, that's a nice, beautiful highway line. Now we've got to dry that so as we can take the other half up. Now the thickness of this, I've done a line there, a pencil mark, just so as I can get the same thickness. So there, and I want to get this right to a point there. There we go. I've dried the other half. Dry it and add your yellow colour again. You can see how it stands out on the white undercoat colour. If it wasn't there, it'll be very transparent or see throughy, which are the words you know the meaning of. I always get transparent and translucent mixed up. I know what they mean, but sometimes I say them in the wrong way. Same as horizontal and vertical. There we go, that'll do. Let's take that off. And we've got ourselves a decent highway line. Now I'm grabbing the Viridian Green again on me, my grass brush. So I'm just going to use this Filbert Cat Tongue. Use whatever you can work for you. And along the road, I want to get bits of grass coming up like so, like ground cover, grass, foliage, whatever. It's important to leave some darks there. I want to start laying it this way now. Now I'll do the same on the other side, but I don't have to do that on camera. Okay, back to the green oxide now. Cleaned my brush, I washed it and dried it. And I've dried the canvas, so this will stick. Get this on the top but leaving dark bits. So I want to get a bit here coming down. And be sure to leave some dark bits on the edge of the road. This is just some painting that's pleasing to the eye. It's not like real grass or anything. Just getting some little bits here on the road. And we'll do the other side. Let that dry and we'll just highlight little bits of that. Okay, so pull out some yellow oxide. Get your brush a little bit dipped in water so it's going to be inky. And get some of this to a highlighted value. And you might just want to lace in bits of this here and there. Do 
do a bit and look in my monitor and just see how it's faring. If you feel the need, you can probably get some kind of deadness coming up. I've just been looking at it. I'm just trying to, I don't like the way this tree looks. So what I'm going to do to disguise that is just kind of bring something forward and dead here. It's a bit scratchy at the moment, but I'll sharpen it off camera if I don't have time to do it on camera, but I want to try and do it on camera. Here we go. Node, node. Just grabbing a bit of the, the yellow I mix for the stripe on the road, the orangey yellow, and I'm just vibing some of it in there just to make out like it's got some kind of light from in the distance hitting it, just to give it more of a, I don't know, bullshitty vibe to it, I suppose. Just small, but wow. A lot of wow for the... A lot of sauce for little spaghetti, as I say. Just want to sign this and then we'll pull the tape off and reveal it. And I want to thank my YouTube channel members and my Patreon members who support my content every month. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a sunset highway, sunset scene with a beautiful sky. Your choice of how you can put stones, rocks, trees and foliage on the side there. And we've got distance going right over to that bright area in the middle. And I know you can do it. Well, that was great fun and interesting, wasn't it? You tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.